I think what we're going to see is something like probably 10 times the impact the Industrial Revolution had, and but 10 times faster as well. Things in the physical world will keep being done by humans for a while, but when this robotics wave comes crashing in another three to seven years, I think that's going to be a, a really big thing for society to reckon with. And then realize that labor isn't the key driver of productivity anymore. We need to have a new equation for that. AI keeps accelerating, and over the past few months, we've begun to see glimpses of AI systems improving themselves. So developing superintelligence is now in sight. I think that it, it has to keep everybody up, actually, because we have no evidence that we know how to control something that is as powerful as us, let alone something that is, by design, way, way, way more capable and intelligent than us. Yeah. So welcome back to This Month in AI, your go-to recap for everything happening in the world of AI. July was another insane month. Meta went all in, assembling a cracked team of 44 top AI researchers. Elon Musk and Sam Altman fired back with massive compute buildouts. Governments finally woke up and started taking AI seriously. ChatGPT got access to its own computer. LLM scored gold at the International Math Olympiad. And one research team claims they've built the world's first artificial super intelligence for AI research itself. So yeah, and that's really only scratching the surface. The progress this month was truly on another level. Let's get into it. All right, so last month we talked a lot about Meta and the massive moves they've been making. From acquiring Scale AI CEO Alexander Wang to poaching a flood of top OpenAI researchers. And this month was no different. First, Zuckerberg went after Safe Super Intelligence, Ilya Sutskever's new company. And when Ilya refused to sell, they straight up stole the president, Daniel Levy, which ultimately forced Sutskever to step in as CEO himself. They then turned their sights on Apple. They poached Ruoming Pang, Apple's top AI executive, along with three other top researchers. They also stole two more prominent OpenAI researchers, Jason Wei and Hyung Won Chung. And just to top it all off, they grabbed a few of Google DeepMind's best, including the researchers behind Google's IMO gold medal winning model, which we'll talk more about later. So yeah, Meta has now assembled a team of 44 elite AI researchers. As you can see from the breakdown here, half of them are Chinese. 40% are from OpenAI, 20% from DeepMind, and probably the craziest part is that 75% of them are first-gen immigrants. These aren't just the top researchers from the US. These are the best minds from around the world. Now, at the helm of this new cracked team, we have, of course, Mark Zuckerberg and the former Scale AI CEO, Alexander Wang. But they've also now announced that Sheng Jia Zhao, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, former OpenAI researcher, will be the chief scientist of Meta's new super intelligence labs. I kind of feel bad for Yan LeCun. Meanwhile, Meta is planning to build data centers the size of Manhattan to fuel all this. And maybe not so surprisingly, they're already hinting at moving away from open source and leaning into the same closed source strategy we're seeing across the US AI scene. So yeah, if one thing's clear though, Meta is officially all in. Now, as you can imagine, Meta's moves ruffled some feathers. In fact, it basically kicked off a full-blown talent poaching spree where companies just started taking people. But beyond just the hiring war, the entire tone of the AI world seems to have shifted. Suddenly, it feels like everyone's going all in, including Elon Musk. In a recent post, he revealed that 550,000 NVIDIA GB200 and GB300 units will be coming online soon, powering their massive new Colossus 2 supercluster. And that's really just the start. He also claimed XAI's long-term goal is to bring online the equivalent of 50 million H100s over the next five years. That's an insane amount of compute. Then there's Sam Altman. This month, he said OpenAI would bring over 1 million GPUs online by the end of the year, and that he wants to 100x that in the long run. That's not just talk either. OpenAI just closed a deal with Oracle to develop 4.5 gigawatts of new Stargate data center capacity. For context, 4.5 gigawatts is enough to literally power entire cities. And of course, Google's not sitting still either. 
While Musk, Zuckerberg, and Altman race to build compute empires, Google's already putting it to work. According to internal reports, over 50% of Google's code is now AI generated. Let that sink in. Half of Google's own code base is literally being written by AI. And since May, they've doubled the number of tokens processed across their infrastructure, which means their models and their usage is scaling fast. So while they haven't made as much noise as the others, quietly, Google is also going all in. Now, while the US AI race is heating up more than we've ever seen before, and while the competition between American AI companies is becoming ruthless, almost warlike, there's one force fueling the fire even more, China. China's open source scene has been catching up fast, and now we're seeing state-of-the-art models dropping constantly at ridiculously low cost. Take Kimi K2 for example, this is a cheap, open source, non-reasoning model, but it's somehow crushing benchmarks, performing on par with Anthropic's Claude 4 Sonnet. Then we got Quen3 Coder from Alibaba. This thing is hitting nearly 70% on Sui Bench Verified, which is one of the most trusted benchmarks for real world coding tasks. It's also generally performing on par with Claude 4 Sonnet, and again, it's open source and dirt cheap. But that's not all. We also got GLM 4.5 and GLM 4.5 Error from Z.AI this month. As you can see from the benchmarks, these models are also pushing state-of-the-art performance while staying lightweight and open. So we're literally seeing models like this drop out of China almost every week now. It's actually getting wild. And it seems like governments have finally started to notice. This month, both the US and China released official AI action plans, marking a clear shift from just watching the AI race to actively participating in it. The US plan focuses on global dominance, radical deregulation, massive expansion of infrastructure, and surprisingly, the promotion of open source AI. Meanwhile, China's plan calls for global AI cooperation, with a heavy emphasis on the risks of not acting responsibly. And all of this is happening while NVIDIA hits a $4 trillion valuation, becoming the most valuable company in the world. At the same time, AI native startups like Lovable are already pulling in $100 million a year in recurring revenue, and they've only been around for 8 months. So all this to say, this really isn't just a tech story anymore. It's a geopolitical, economic, and scientific transformation. The level of investment and the speed of deployment is honestly unprecedented. And maybe the best explanation for why all this is happening right now comes from Google DeepMind CEO Demis Hassabis. In an interview with Lex Friedman this month, he was asked about Meta and the aggressive moves we're seeing across the board. And his answer kind of says it all. Take a look. You know, Meta right now are not at the frontier. Maybe they'll they'll manage to get back on there. And, um, you know, it's probably rational what they're doing from their perspective because they're behind and they need to do something. But I think um, there's more important things than, than just money. Of course, one has to pay, you know, people their market rates and all of these things. And that continues to go up. <laughs> um, but as pro and, and, and I was expecting this because more and more people are finally realizing leaders of companies, what I've always known for 30 plus years now, which is that AGI is the most important technology probably that's ever going to be invented. So in some senses, it's, it's rational to be doing that. So yeah, everyone's betting big on AGI. And at this point, it's starting to feel like it's only a couple of years away. But in the meantime, we're still getting better and better models every single month. Our latest example of that is Grok 4. Grok 4 is the first model to ever scale this heavily with reinforcement learning compute. And the results are clear. It gets a state-of-the-art score of 50.7% on humanity's last exam, one of the most challenging benchmarks ever created. It's state-of-the-art across traditional benchmarks, even hitting 100% on the Amy math test. It gets 15.9% on Arc AGI 2, nearly doubling Claude 4 Opus, and it dominates on Vending Bench, a benchmark where the model runs a vending machine business and tries to actually make money. So without a doubt, XAI has pretty much caught up. I mean, we'll see what GPT-5 looks like. We know it's projected for an early August release. But as of right now, Grok 4, or at least Grok 4 Heavy, is definitely a top 3 model. But Grok wasn't the only big update in July. 
we also got our first real glimpse at a fully agentic AI system with the release of ChatGPT Agent. You can think of this as giving ChatGPT its own computer because that's basically what they did. It can open files, browse the web, run commands in a terminal, connect to apps like Gmail and GitHub, and even log into websites on your behalf. This is easily the most autonomous version of ChatGPT we've seen yet. And OpenAI says it's just the beginning. Performance-wise, it's already surpassing OpenAI's own best models, like O3 and O4 Mini, across a range of economically important tasks. And you can imagine that, just like with every other AI benchmark, those scores are only going to keep climbing. Now, while OpenAI went the route of giving ChatGPT its own cloud-based computer, Perplexity brought Agentic AI directly into your browser. They dropped Comet, a new browser experience with a built-in AI assistant that can follow what you're doing, help you research in real time, and automate entire workflows. You can highlight text for instant explanations, manage tabs, send emails, book appointments, all from the same window. I truly think this will be the next most popular way people use AI baked right into the browser, working with you as you go. There were even rumors circulating this month that OpenAI might be launching its own browser in the coming weeks. So yeah, it's starting to look like the next big battleground for AI isn't just a cloud, it's the browser. But while agents are all the buzz right now, the LLMs actually powering them are still crossing milestones we didn't even think were possible. OpenAI's quote, experimental reasoning LLM, achieved gold medal level performance on this year's International Math Olympiad, one of the most prestigious math competitions in the world. And they weren't alone. Google's advanced version of Gemini Deep Think also hit gold, just weeks before some of the team behind it got poached by Meta. So this was actually a huge deal. Many experts thought we were still years away from seeing an LLM achieve gold in this competition. But honestly, at this point, being surprised by AI is just routine. Every month, it resets what we thought was possible. But this next one was a bit more than routine. It's actually a new paper that claims to have built an AI that can invent better AI completely on its own. Over thousands of experiments and tens of thousands of GPU hours, ASI Arch autonomously discovered 106 novel attention architectures, beating human design baselines across the board. And get this, the researchers say their system scales scientific discovery as a function of compute. Basically, they found a kind of scaling law for innovation itself. If true, this could be the first real demonstration of recursive self-improvement which could ultimately lead to an intelligence explosion of sorts, where AI just keeps creating better and better AI, faster and faster, exponentially. Now, this of course raises some red flags, because, I mean, if AI can keep improving itself, getting faster, smarter, more capable with every generation, then at what point do we simply lose control over it? This month, over 40 experts from OpenAI, DeepMind, Anthropic, Meta, and Top Labs came together to sound the alarm. Their message? We may already be losing the ability to see an AI's train of thought. Their research argues that chain of thought monitoring, reading the model's step-by-step -step reasoning in language, is a critical safety tool, but a fragile one. If training methods evolve, or models learn to hide their reasoning, humans could completely lose visibility into what they're actually thinking. Now, what makes this paper different, and honestly hopeful, is who wrote it. People from rival labs, competitors, even different philosophies, all coming together to say, this risk is real, and we have to face it together. And that leads us to one clip from Sam Altman that kind of sums up the entire month. Because while the world races toward AGI, even the people building it aren't even sure if we can coordinate in time. Check this out. The national securities, the US, China, uh, Middle East, Russia, people are fighting each other for difference in opinion or different in ideology, and people shoot each other. Still, war has not finished. This is well out of my area of expertise. 
Uh, I'm not, I agree with you. It's going to be an extremely powerful, maybe the high order bit of geopolitical power. There have been other times in history, like with nuclear weapons, where the world has come together and said, hey, this is an amazingly powerful thing. We need some serious international standards and we need to we need to avoid a predictable, disastrous outcome. And I'm very impressed the world came together on nuclear and that we have not detonated a bomb in war in a very long time. Is the world going to be able to do that again with AI weapons? I hope so. I believe so. But it is a different time than, you know, the 1940s and... I don't know how that's all going to come together. So yeah, and let's not forget, just around the corner are humanoid robots that will be embodied by these AI systems. This month, we saw more and more humanoid robots out in public roaming the streets, especially in China, and they're getting scarily good. They not only move way more naturally, but they're also starting to put on clothes. In all seriousness though, the potential benefits that can come from humanoid robots is immense. For example, just this month, the first ever fully autonomous gallbladder removal was completed by a surgical robot with 100% accuracy and zero human intervention. Now, this was of course done on a hyper-realistic medical mannequin and not an actual human patient. But think about where this is going to be 10 years from now. I mean, imagine having a literal super intelligence as your surgeon that's done the procedure millions of times before, and that's literally treating thousands of others simultaneously. And if that wasn't wild enough, this month we also saw a self-charging humanoid robot. It just walks up to the charging station, reloads its own battery, and keeps on going. It can apparently run for several days 24-7 without ever taking a break. So just to step back for a second, we've now got AI brains that can improve themselves, robot bodies that can operate autonomously, infrastructure being built to deploy them at scale, and every tech company in the world throwing billions at accelerating it. What could go wrong? It's really not just automation anymore. It feels like we're building a whole new species. And also a second workforce. One that doesn't sleep, doesn't eat, and that learns at machine speed. So yeah, that was July. And if this is what one month looks like, Imagine the next 12. If you made it this far, you're already ahead of 99% of people. Make sure to hit that subscribe button to keep it that way, and let me know what you thought about this month's progress in the comments. Because honestly, this felt like one of the biggest months we've seen yet. Anyways, thanks for watching, and as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.